Hi, I'm David from Levika Photography, and today I'm bringing you guys finally the well overdue Fotix Mitros. And uh, let me pull this little piece of plastic off the back here. You know, it's a very handy dandy flash. I like it, and I don't. And we're going to go through why here in just a second. Now, the things that you need to know about this flash as far as flashes go this has a really high guide number that is great you know I you want as much power as you can possibly have especially when it comes to high-speed sync because in high-speed sync uh, and I have a video that explains this uh, here's the info to see that video right here okay so uh, the way high-speed sync and a shutter work is it's digital and it blips down and the reason why we're looking at the Photix Mitros flash is because of its high speed sync capability and because of its power. Uh, there are a few minor issues with it, however. So overall, let's just take a quick look at this. Okay, the mount. You know, the mount is not the most impressive thing on the planet. Uh, it has the same two plastic pin setup that the Nissan i40 does. And I'm not a real huge fan of this slide lock thing. These plastic pins, these concern me because if those break, this thing just slides right off. And if this thing is, if you think it's locked on and those pins aren't in because they're spring loaded, uh, it can easily fall off the camera. So that, this kind of mount drives me crazy, but that's not really, you know, here nor there. That's just my personal preference. Still, uh, it has the proper hot shoe on it. Let's see here. Let's just do a test. We're at three seconds apart doing full power on the Young Now. And on this one, at 190 with power all the way up. 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000. 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000. So this one's just slightly slower. I want to say closer to four seconds on fresh batteries. Now at half power, the recycle time is a little better. And it's just under three seconds. And then at a quarter power, it's a second, which I like. That's pretty fast. And then at an eighth of a second, it's pretty much continuous. So that's good. I mean, it, this is a very powerful flash. Uh, it's got a lot of strong light to it. Uh, how easy is the back of this to use? Very easy. I did not need to even look at the manual to be able to go through this. Uh, TTL, uh, manual, and multi. Those are your three settings. Very easy to deal with. This does not have the Photix Odin transmitter in it. This is just the regular one. Let's see how this thing works and let's see uh, what the zoom quality is like. Okay, everything is set up on the camera and we've got this on high speed sync and manual. And would it help if I turn that light on so you guys can see? You know, we're at an eighth of a power, we're at 50 millimeter. Now, our lens today is the um, Fotasi uh, CCTV 35 millimeter lens. And I'm just, I threw this one on here just to see how it would do. Now, straight on high speed sync. Uh, we have very even color. And we have a 35 millimeter lens. This is zoomed at 50. So we're getting just a little bit of vignetting, which is what it should do. Now, 105. And again, we're getting a little bit of of tightness, which is what it should do. Now let's look at the bounce corners and see what those look like. And overall, that looks pretty good. If I put the flash on, lock it in, all is good. Now I want to show you guys a bug, and this is a really weird bug. So right now I'm at 320th of a second. Normally when you put a flash on here, 
And I'm not sure if this is Sony or Photix. I think it's more on the Sony side, but it could be both. Now, a thousandth of a second. And let me see what I got here. We got nothing. So it's not recording in high-speed sync, but it's not locking us out either, which is very strange. So what I discovered was if we turn on high-speed sync, it's still not coming on. So this is a bug, I believe, with the flash. Okay, now if we go over here and pull this lens off and then stick on an AF lens, now we're not in AF mode, we're still in manual mode, but I'll just focus in here really quick. Now at our thousandth of a second with high speed sync on, guess what? It works. So now if I go back to our manual focus lens and shove that on there and then we focus back in here thousandth of a second it works okay so if you try to do this setup and you have to I recommend you start with an autofocus lens on the camera then switch it over manual focus if you guys find this problem as well uh, I seem to be able to reproduce it on all three of my Sony cameras so you know, I think it's, I'm not sure if it's a photics problem or a problem with the camera, but either way, if you run into this issue, start with an autofocus lens, set everything up, then switch it over to a manual lens. Everything seems to work fine. Weird. Good morning, happy robot baby. How are you today? Oh, he's just fine. He's waiting to assimilate somebody. He wants to stick tubes in me later. I think we'll do that later. Now, one of my favorite flash tests, uh, some of you, those of you that are subscribed to my channels that watch my videos regularly will know that one of my favorite features about the Young Now flashes, even though they don't play well with Sony for high speed sync, uh, the 560s, 2s, and 3s, if you have a high speed sync flash, you can shoot the flash into their optical slave on S1 and they will give you high speed sync at an angle. Brilliant. Why doesn't everybody do this? So anyway, uh, we're going to go ahead and try the test with this flash. Now with all of our other high speed syncs uh, flashes in the past, it's worked just fine. So let's see what this does. And I'm going to point the head that way and we're going to zoom this in. So we got to flip up our panel. It is flipped up. And then we're going to zoom all the way to 105. And now we're going to take our high speed sync shot at 2,000th of a second. Uh oh. This isn't good. I wonder why it's doing that. Because it's going off. Drop it down to 125. Huh. That's just so bizarre. So, you know, I've, I've tried this with both of my Young Now setups, and I just wanted to replicate it here in the studio so you can see what the problem was. But, is there another way that we can get bigger high speed sync out of this without having it to be mounted on the camera or to use the Photix Odin system uh, because I don't have one? Well, let's go outside and play with this. And I have a really good friend of mine with me today, Miss Molly Jean. She is one of my favorite models ever. We've worked together for years, and she has graciously allowed me to take some high-speed action shots of her. Yay. I can't <laughs> wait to see what you're going to do. What are you going to do? Whatever you tell me to do. Perfect. I like that. That's the best way ever. And she's got these killer contacts in that make her eyes even bluer than they actually are. We're adding our ancient, if you want to point down, this is a Speedotron light kit. This thing is probably 30 years old, and it was given to me by a friend of mine, and I rewired it and got it working. So we're going to play with this and the flashes today to see how much power we can get. This is a 600 watt kit. Flashes in general are usually the equivalent of about 160 watt seconds. And this is at 600 watt seconds. As far as lumens or guide numbers go, you could probably think of it as maybe we have a value today of like probably 400 for a guide number. So let's check this out. We're going to try this at a thousandth of a second to start. The, our setup here is I'm shooting the Photix flash 
and I'm shooting into an optical slave, and this optical slave has got to be at least 20 years old. And that's our plug-in. And because this is a strobe kit, it has a longer duration of a flash. So even though the strobe kit isn't digital, it's not wired for high-speed sync or anything like that, it doesn't read the pulses from the flash, it only blasts the light. But it's a really long duration, so it's able to capture it all the way through the shutter. And when this goes off, these young nows pick up the light from this, and they fire. So this gives us a lot of light to play with. So let's see how this goes. That looks so cool. Same thing? Yeah. So on the butt shine, these are rescue pants. <laughs> oh, I don't think we got any strobe that time, did we? Nope, I was looking at the camera. Okay, there you go. There you go. All right. I know what I'm doing wrong. Okay, ready. That is so cool. Oh, it went off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that looks amazing. worked out way better than I thought it would. Um, I was, I'm glad I was able to actually achieve that because the high-speed sync on this flash does not work the same with this flash. It's kind of a bummer. So, you know, one thing I did want to point out to you guys is flash-wise, these are about the same size. This is Young Now 562. Um, you know, head-wise, they're the same. They got the same movements. Uh, same back end, very easy navigation. And they even have what's basically the same style of battery door. Uh, the only thing that's kind of disappointing was the very first Photix flash that I got uh, turned out to be a dud uh, right out of the box. And I uh, called up the camera company that I bought it from and they're up in Washington and they said that this was the first one that they had seen that had been bad and that's kind of actually amazing. So, you know, good for Photix. The only problem is they tried to get a hold of Photix and couldn't get a hold of them to see if I could just fix it with a flash with a uh, firmware update. Now the other issue is, because of that, uh, I sent Photix, actually I sent them six emails, one to sales, one to support from three different accounts over a period of two months and never got a response. So that kind of makes me wonder how good these guys are and who's going to uphold that warranty if the camera company goes out of business, what do you do then? You know, there's nothing that you can really do. And they don't have a, uh, a U.S. Uh, distribution center that you can just call. So I'm a little concerned about that as well. The last concern is the price. This does not have the wireless transmitter in it. This was 300 bucks. Is it any better than this one? Well, it does high-speed sync. So you're paying... Uh, essentially $230 more than this flash for high-speed sync. So I'll leave, that guy, I'll leave that up to you. But overall, I think it's a decent flash. I just don't know if I want to spend that much money for it. So, you know, I'm going to move on to the uh, uh, Nissan DI700 with Air Commander and see what happens with that when we get one. So I hope you guys like this review. If you do, give me a thumbs up and uh, leave a comment, click on the ads, it helps me down the road, and uh, otherwise we'll talk to you guys later. You have a good day.